This is going to be a giant theory so we will break it down and organize this talk into main ideas. We may go back over some material from previous videos to bring it all together. Main idea 1 Breath of the Wild 2 will be about a timeline merger that Link has to help reconcile. It has been stated by many official sources that Breath of the Wild comes at the end of all the timelines. Therefore it logically follows that at some point there must have begun some form of timeline reconciliation. If timelines are being merged it would make sense if they went into a lot of backstory and backfilled some lore and plot holes in canon. Getting the lore right may be a big reason the game keeps getting delayed. If think about it, each time there is a tweak or rewrite to the lore a lot of in-game elements may need to change or at least be reskinned. In order to cleanly merge these vastly different games and timelines into something that makes any sense may be very difficult while still keeping the game's story and plot relatively easy to grasp. One such backstory could be going into how Ganon ended up as a desiccated corpse under Hyrule Castle. This could happen either by Link time traveling among the past, present, and future discovering clues as he commits actions in each timeline that help reconcile the timeline. Or if Zelda is adventuring underground digging up old mysteries and feeding information to Link who is above ground battling Ganon for the fate of the merged timeline. This could be the basis of making Zelda playable and running two game lines since Zelda and Link are separated. Main Idea 2 Evidence of Merger of Worlds and Timelines in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Mountains meet with a clear seam and different types of rock along the border of the map especially near the deep chasms surrounding the map. Were these deep chasms cut by the dragons? Ancient bones are interlaced and even fused with ancient ruins in many areas but very obvious at the ancient Gerudo ruins. Spikes of unclimbable rock merged with regular rock at the northeast corner of the map. The unclimbable rock is similar to the material of the Sheka shrines. Main Idea 3 The ancient Sheka worked with the Zanai and possibly others to build shrines, labyrinths and towers. The shrines are not typical of Zanai Sheka Gerudo or Hylian design. Some shrines seem to be integral to all types of ruins and structures from different eras and peoples including some Zanai. Ancient Hylian, Ancient Gerudo the Forgotten Temple and Deep Within Mountains and Other Natural Structures. The mazes appear to be a collaboration of Ancient Sheikah, Ancient Hylian, Ancient Gerudo and Zana, perhaps during the initial merging of timelines. Main idea for Din's redemption. Being that Din is still one of the golden goddesses is she simply misunderstood by her followers. Could there ultimately be a reconciliation amongst the three powers and the three timelines? Bruce tried to usurp Link but ended up helping Link kill Demise. Twilly tried to usurp the Hylians but Midna ended up helping in the end. The Zanai tapped into the Triforce powers and worshipped all three animals that represented the goddess's powers, but later the boar was denigrated. Main Idea 5 The Triforce of Power Din Demise and Ganondorf are connected. Din's Triforce of Power is deeply connected to Ganondorf and Ganondorf is seemingly connected to Demise, so it makes sense that the Triforce of Power is connected to Demise as well. Considering the wildly different personalities and powers of the Triforce pieces and presumably the Golden Goddesses, it may make sense that the influence of Din's power often has a negative outcome for its wielders. Is the Triforce in a stable balance? If we consider that the Triforce is almost always depicted with one triangle on top, which triangle is that? Does it change over time? We know triangle position matters because when it is depicted upside down it represents another realm. Loru. So it begs the question is Demise connected to Din the goddess of power in the same way Nehru is connected to goddess Hylia? Was Demise's curse real or just him stating that just like Hylia would be reborn anew as Zelda? His defeat would simply cause him to be reborn again as Ganondorf and so start a natural cycle doomed to repeat. It would make sense if there is a pattern. Goddess. Triforce Peace, Demigod and Mortal Reincarnation. That would mean there would be Din. Triforce of Power Demise and Ganon. Nehru. Triforce of Wisdom, Hylia and Zelda, leaving Faror. The Triforce of Courage, the original champion and Link. What if there are two opposite goddesses and one to balance the two? And if they each left a demigod and Triforce piece behind? There may have been a Hylia demigod related to water and wisdom. Then the opposite demise demigod related to fire and power. And finally a link between the two like electricity which runs through water and can cause fire. Or wind which causes waves on water and stokes a fire. The idea is further strengthened because malice is the same color as Din's energy. And Din, the Oracle of Seasons has red hair and red eyes similar to the Twilight Princess. Did the Zanai have red hair and red eyes? Gerudo has red hair. Sheka has red eyes. Did Gruus take over the Earth Temple and started his people there? There are many patterns and motifs that are first seen at the Fire Temple in Skyward Sword such as the Spiral, the Meander, the Wave Dot Pattern, Dragon, Snakes and more. Main Idea 6 was Gruus used by Demise to enact his curse. Who helped kill Demise? Who was there? Zelda, Link, and Pa, Gruus. All cursed and all recur or are reborn throughout the series. Why was Gruus chosen? Likely because he was most easily influenced by Din's power and due to physical size and appearance, 
Similarities like red hair and gold eyes. Easily manipulated personality traits like vanity. Rivalry, desires for power leadership and Zelda. Also the inherent jealousy of Link may have also made him the most likely choice. You can see the vanity when he suggests naming Hyrule Grusaland. He led a team of bullies as the strong man in the group. Were Groose's weaknesses recognized by Demise and used against him and his descendants? Main idea 7 Red-haired humanoids stem from Groose and Grusaland. Did Groose actually found Grusaland? And over time did Grusaland evolve into Gerudo? Are the Gerudo, Twilly and Zanai red-haired descendants of Groose? Are the Zanai ancient Gerudo before most including all males were banished to the Twilight Zone as interlopers? Is this why Zant wears the Gerudo crest and connects to Ganondorf? Could this be how the Gerudo were cursed to only have one male at a time? The rest were banished to the Twilight Realm. Most antagonists in the series are all redheads and many even have a red jewel on the forehead. Ganondorf, Ganon, Zanai, Groose, Gerudo, Twilly, Midna, Zant, Yuga, Astor, Twinrova, Demise and Din. Even Vadi had purple hair and a red jewel. Purple is a mix of blue and red, which is a theme we see with Twinrova as well. Also why the red jewel on the forehead? Does it amplify Din's power? Does it open them to possession by Demise's spirit? It seems the spirit of the goddess Hylia is still exerting general influence outside of just reincarnating as Zelda. Could this also be true of Demise? Just like Groose, many of the antagonists have red hair and believe others' power belongs to them. Such examples are Ganon seeking the Triforce, interlopers banished due to seeking power, Twilly determined rulers by who had the most magical power, Zant believes he should have the throne, Groose wanted to be the hero, Gerudo only respected power in their early history, Ganondorf seeks to rule Hyrule when he already has his own kingdom. Demise seeks all the power. Does this signify a connection to Din as the origin of the turmoil? Is this an ancient contest between the opposites of Din and Nehru, with Faror and Link caught in the middle as balance? Was Ganon involved with the Zanai? Main idea 8 Ganondorf's corpse is directly powering the Astral Observatory. Breath of the Wild's final battle is a clue since Ganondorf's body is below the castle's Astral Observatory which is below the Sanctum. Why is an astral observatory underground with no view of the stars? Maybe they are viewing something else such as the future and or past. Could this actually be part of the mechanism to capture and convert or utilize the excess malice and green energy that is radiating from Ganondorf and the hand? The walls of the astral observatory chamber seem neglected and in disrepair and ancient. Malice from below pours up through the floors of these chambers during the final battle and it looks very similar to the malice in Breath of the Wild too. Could it be a forgotten power source for the Astral Observatory in Hyrule Castle? These two powers may be harnessed and converted to Sheikah energy. This may explain why Malice was able to corrupt the Guardians easily. Main idea 9 Astor is going to be mentioned in Breath of the Wild too. Astor's role was probably much smaller in Breath of the Wild than it was in Age of Calamity since he never meets a Malice-infected Tariko. Astor's globe is a control device for the Astral Observatory that was stolen from Zelda's mother the Queen. The Queen was partially of Gerudo bloodline. Hence her connection to Urbosa. Astor is of Gerudo bloodline hence his red hair. And knowledge of the globe. Is Astor the brother of the Queen of Hyrule? Did he betray her? Astor's globe projects star patterns and connects with the patterns in the Astral Observatory in order to allow increased far sight. The Astral Observatory gathers malice energy from Ganon to power the star symbols and enhances far sight. Ganon's body resides below the Sactum and Astral Observatory and his malice and spirit rise up to take root in the chamber above the Sactum to form the Blight Ganon. Ganon is able to use the Astral Observatory for far sight as well. Astor is the prophet mentioned and may have killed Zelda's mom in an ambush with the Yiga to acquire the Astral Globe and far sight which is what makes him the prophet. One evidence of the globe's ability is that Astor is able to make out an image when his globe is passed by Harbinger Ganon. The globe's ability to use various types of energy can be seen when it absorbs souls and malice to become more powerful. Astor's name makes sense if he is using star symbols. What do we know about Astor? Gerudo symbol, Yiga connection. Star symbols connection. Gray skin like a Sheikah monk. The eye of malice in his forehead gem connects him to Ganondorf. Are Astor and the Sheikah monk some of the missing Gerudo males? Main idea 10 Twilly Sol Orbs from the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. What if the Sol Orbs were the power the interlopers developed to challenge the goddesses? What if there were three Sols at first, with one representing each goddess? The interlopers may have been defeated and banished by destroying the Sol of Power. This may have left only two Sols in the Twilight Realm later which Link used to power the Master Sword. The Sols from Twilight Princess also look to have a similar design as the armband on the hand from Breath of the Wild too. Some have speculated that the hand is Zanai. Well if the Zanai are ancient Gerudo and ancient Sheikah turned interlopers and are in fact predecessors of the Twilly then the hand can be said to be Twilly as well. Are the hand and the Sol orbs the same tech? 
The following are just a few similarities we have noticed so far, long-lasting possibly thousands of years. How long did the Sol Orb shine? It would seem a long time in game. How long was the hand around? It would seem at least 10,000 years. They are both long-lasting magic. Also the ancient monks are this same shade of greenish blue and have similar motifs in the shrines as well and are thousands of years old as well. Another similarity between the hand and the souls is the seeming ability to banish dark magic. One of the souls' jobs was literally to banish dark magic. Do they repel or convert dark magic in malice with their light? It would seem the hand is able to suppress Ganondorf's dark power. Star symbols are found on both the soul orbs and the hand. Patterns with bright lines and circles. The hand and the soul orbs also share a similar color scheme. Greenish color similar to spirits and fewer. The goddess statues from Wind Waker each have an orb about the size of a sol which indicates the sol orbs may be related to the goddess's powers. Main idea 11 similar patterns on clothing. The breath of the wild Zanai dragon statue's mouth looks like the symbol on Ganon's collar from the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which is also similar to the symbol on Midna's adult form's hairpiece in Twilight Princess. The image on the barbarian set matches the inner part of the Sheka eye and resembles a twilly sol orb. Red gem surrounded by gold and a diamond shape can be seen on Groose, Vogir, and Ganondorf. The square wave meanders are used on gear often with or without a dot, as well as the round wave with or without a dot. Main idea 12 Spirals There are many variations on the theme of spirals in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds and the Legend of Zelda lore, and iconography in general. Could the square spiral equal G for Gerudo, Groose, and Ganondorf? The square spiral looks like the Sheikah letter G and is found on Zanai as well as Twilly artifacts and armor such as the Fused Shadow. Another example is the much-talked-about Zanai symbol, which features a spiral with a tick. I would like to side note quickly that this symbol looks eerily similar to the Leaf Village symbol from Naruto. But I digress, the Zanai symbol has been speculated to represent the pact made to seal or drain Ganondorf which is depicted by that spiral, while the tick might represent either the Triforce of Power or the ceiling spike above Ganondorf's corpse. Was this a pact between the ancient Sheikah, ancient Hylians and the ancient Gerudo or Zanai? Many snakes and dragons are depicted with tails spiraled. Main idea 13 The square wave pattern also known as the meander motif is literally everywhere in almost every game. In the real world this pattern is called the Greek key meander pattern and means infinity and unity. It represents a labyrinth, a maze, and can refer to either a complex branching multicursal puzzle with choices of path and direction as an obstacle to reaching the center, or a unicursal labyrinth which has only a single path that eventually leads to the center, but may have a challenge like the minotaur or traps along the way. In the sense of the Zelda world it could both be true. A branching multicursal timeline that is ultimately reconciled into a single path with Ganon as the Minotaur and the branching paths as well as the single path. Other possible meanings. Gears, from the Gate of Time. Snake. The Zanai snakes form square wave meanders on Zanai pillars. It may signify events that have been changed by time. To name a few places it can be seen prominently. The Gates of Time. The square wave pattern represents gears of the open gates. The meander is also seen on many temples such as the Fire Temple. Stone Temple, Sealed Temple in the Temple of Time. The square meander pattern is depicted on the clothes of Ganon. Link in Twinrova in green and red. The square wave with a dot pattern can be seen on clothes of the royal family and the Gerudo Desert Bow clothes. Gates and portals might connect all timelines and worlds and this connection could be represented as the square wave. The square wave with dot seems to be connected to the rounded wave with dot and the omega sign with dot and even to the circle dot and the eye. Main idea 14 The Gerudo Desert was an ocean at various times. Sand seals and muljigas are originally ocean creatures. Whale skeletons abound. Green and red triangles on ships and skyward sword in areas that are desert at one time and ocean at another. These triangles are also present on ancient Gerudo structures in Breath of the Wild as well as on Gerudo luggage, vases and pots. All archways in the Gerudo Desert are cracked at the top in the same way. Are the cracked archways from flooding? Did the archways hold doors which locked into the top of the archway causing them to break the archway at the top during flooding? Whale skeletons on top of ancient ruins show the flooding that happened after the ancient Gerudo ruins were built. There are many raised bridges and walkways over dry sand areas. There seem to be different water level lines in the area. Could multiple eras of flooding have caused different water lines at multiple levels? This wet and dry cycle could keep creatures from fully evolving to desert creatures. Muljigas and sand seals can swim probably in sand or water. A glitch allows you to see an ocean under desert with muljigas swimming about. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. This content is produced by the twin team of father and daughter known as Zelda Twin Time. Until next time.